the 32nd head football coach of the University of Arkansas Razorbacks, Brett Bierma. Brett. December 5th, 2012, Jeff Long ushers in the new era of Razorback football under coach Brett Bielema. During the eighth-month search, Bielema's name did not get widely discussed, so the announcement came with surprise and a series of questions. What kind of coach is Bielema? What's his background? What is he like? Well, it prompted us here at the Razorback Nation to begin a month-and-a-half-long process of finding the answers to all those questions and then some. Which brings us here to this one-hour special from the hog farm to head hog. And the first thing we learned about Brett Bielema is to truly understand him, you must understand where he grew up. You know, there's a great quote from Abraham Lincoln that says, I've never met a successful man who wasn't proud of where he came from. Born in a small suburb of the Quad Cities, Brett Bielema's family moved to an even smaller town when he was four years old, Prophetstown. Actually, in the entire world, there's only one Prophetstown. Is that right? Yep. And we're in it. Nestled away in northwest Illinois, P-Town, as the locals call it, is home to about 2,000 people. It's quaint, blue collar. There was never a stoplight. There was never any fast food. The nearest fast food was a Hardee's. It was 20 minutes away. And grew up on a farm that uh, uh, was surrounded by cornfields, bean fields, hay fields. Uh, nearest neighbor was about a half a mile away. And um, grew up with two brothers and two sisters on the farm with my mom and dad. And eventually got to a point where we had over 2,500 head of pigs. Really, that's all I ever knew. A unique childhood, but one that taught me hard work. Uh, taught me a lot of the things that I think I lean on today heavily that uh, maybe some other people didn't have growing up. The Bielema children, along with Father Arnie, served as the farm staff. When you have livestock, when you have animals like that, they never have a day off. Just anything that came up with livestock production, you know, I mean, from cleaning pens to moving hogs to sorting hogs to weaning pigs, uh, it was just something going on all the time. Walking through three feet of snow with, with hay bales uh, up to your ears and, and, and trudging away just because you knew they had to survive, you had to get them warm, you had to keep them clean and it was a, a daily detail of taking care of the livestock, feeding them. A lot of times I was the younger, most athletic, so I was like the decoy. I would sprint across the uh, hog lot and they would kind of chase me and then everybody else would come lay feet after me and um, some daily duties that you really just kind of made him fun because he didn't have any choice. In Provostown, you're a farm boy or you're a city boy, basically, and city boy has 2,000 people. And he was a farm boy, so he was a hard-working guy. You know, in high school, I can remember Friday night after a football game, we'd all go out and get pizza or do whatever we are going to do, and he couldn't go out because he had to get, get home and get up the next morning and feed the hogs and do all that kind of stuff. There was a lot of times where my buddies would go to the mall on Saturdays or they were, you know, going on vacations or uh, they were doing some fun things that seemed like they'd be fun for families and I didn't really give it much thought I just knew that that's what wasn't in the deck of cards for me. Um, I remember getting done with football games on Friday nights and coming home and you're pretty banged up, you're pretty sore and that didn't stop dad from, uh, my mom would uh, give a little rise and shine, morning, morning, glory. That was the way I woke up for my whole childhood. That would come about 6, 6.30 in the morning. You'd go down, have breakfast and uh, you start a day at work that really didn't, didn't end until it was done. Brett routinely employed a group of buddies to come work on the farm with him. One that I always get a kick out of I think it was about five kids. We fed them well, we paid them well, and uh, they, mom fed really well, and there'd be pizza and Kool-Aid and heaven knows what all, and the kids would all go back to town and tell their buddies, so Brett had a <laughs> wait list of kids to come out the farm, you might say, but I can't remember what it was the first year or what, but he had this crew come out. And that night he said, Dad, he said, so-and-so's not pulling his weight. And I said, what do you mean? He's just, he just goofing off. I said, well, you hire him, you fire him. Okay. So that night, when he come home, he says, well, he's on his way, but I got somebody else coming tomorrow, you know. And I always think that was pretty good for a kid that age to uh, have to make that decision and willing to do it. And the fact that he didn't cover up for him, he come to me and said, Daddy's not pulling his weight. I mm -hmm. mean, but that was just the way we were raised. A leader, you know, as always, he was, uh, he took charge and uh, he, he knew what he was doing, that's for sure. I think Arnie had him working out there for a long time. Brett always called himself his free labor, which he, he was for Arnie, so. <laughs> With college fast approaching, Brett needed cash. So he got a part-time job at the grocery store working for Dennis Johnson. He always had a smile on his face. No matter what I asked him to do, he'd do it. 
And a lot of times they go, seriously? <laughs> he was always a good worker. Worked for way too little money here. He grossly underpaid me. I didn't pay him well enough? Yeah. Compared to what he makes now? No, I don't. <laughs> Once unloaded an entire truck of watermelon and cantaloupes right here by myself because two other guys quit. He likes telling everybody that. He may exaggerate a little bit. Like one of his uncles said, well, maybe that got you to where you are today, you know. You give him a job, he, he's going to do it. Johnson now owns the Mini Mart next door. Drive by and you'll see a Razorback flag proudly waving where a Wisconsin flag previously flew. The day I was announced, that came down and that one went up. A beacon for Prophetstown's favorite son, Brett Bielema. They used to have a sign coming into town all directions, hometown of Brett Bielema. This is the way we are. I mean, as soon as we knew the change, there we are. You start seeing more Wisconsin stuff popping up here and there, and now even the stores in Sterling are carrying Wisconsin stuff, and it's been quite, everybody's very, very proud of them. All the best to you. Thank you very much. There. You know, Appreciate we're all it. proud of you. Thank you. Absolutely. I mean, you see the Wisconsin flags flying they have, and, you know, wearing of the red and white, and everybody's willing to change the colors and be a part of Arkansas now. So, yeah, everybody's very proud of them. I mean, that day alone, when the announcements came out, I mean, my texts were flying, Facebook messages, everybody was asking about it and talking about it. It was the big news. There'll be a lot of Razorback fans up here. This will be uh, Fayetteville North. You'll see a lot of flags. I got a flag flying out in front of my house. I know there's some uptown already. And, and it's just, yeah, it's real neat to see that. And, uh, and they are very proud of him. He goes uptown, you know, everybody's proud to see him. And, and he's worked hard for what he's accomplished, and they realize that. As Bielema's career continued to rise, he's held a special place in his heart for Prophetstown, always remaining faithful to those who remain faithful to him. If you blink, you miss it. But it's a good little hometown. Wouldn't trade it in for the world. No matter what Brett has done in his life, he's never forgot his roots. It's pretty incredible, I think. And well, you've met Arnie and Marilyn, I'm sure, haven't you? Well, there's a pretty solid bedrock there. You don't find a whole lot of better people than Arnie and Marilyn. And I think if he ever got too big for his britches or had got too big, They'd knock him right back down to where he's supposed to be. I really think that would be the case. You see and read about people and how they, people say that they've changed and whatnot, but he's always stayed grounded and um, always knows where he's come from. And I think his parents have a big part in that, that they've instilled him to be a great man and appreciate what he has and where he's come from. So I think that that's a big part of why he really, you know, treasures coming back to P-Town because he can just be treated as Brett. Now to come back, everything just looks so much smaller. Everything back then was huge, you know. He never forgot, never forgot where he came from, that's for sure, and who his friends were. And he's, he's very loyal to the people that, he, that he's close with. Promised out in Iowa, Kansas State, Wisconsin, and now Arkansas, and I, he's been great to me the whole step of the way and to a lot of other people, too. Our Brett Bielema journey is just getting started on this one-hour Razorback Nation special. Up next, the story that gives this show its name. Put the pig on front of it, just go, sui, 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 sui. You know, uh, a couple other words you probably interjected in there as well. He used to call the hogs for real, now he calls them for work. Brett Bielema's life has come full circle.